One of the tricks of this book was to swap, really, swap viewpoint from being about uh, Elizabeth Woodville, the matriarch of the House of York, the White Queen, to, to the matriarch of the House of Tudor, of Lancaster, the Red Queen, Margaret Beaufort. And it was really quite hard initially. I thought I'd never love anybody as much as I love Elizabeth Woodville, but I found it very, very soon I could start imagining things from the point of view of Margaret Beaufort. I think one of the great questions at looking at any of the characters in this period is, is how far are they genuinely living a spiritual life and how far are they in a sense going through the motions because they have to be in a sense holy and thought of as godly people, especially the women, because there's so much criticism of women anyway that if they're not regarded as in a sense saints then they're very easily regarded as sinners or worse still witches. Uh, in the case of Margaret Beaufort, I think she genuinely had a very solid faith and that it supported her in times of really hard times. And uh, in a sense, she really believed that she was doing God's work and that by conspiring and plotting and absolutely being determined in her ambitions to get her son on the throne, she was doing the will of God. The scenes of Mary's childbirth in the, in the book are horrific, but uh, childbirth was horrific in those days. There's no anaesthesia at all. There's no idea that pain should be controlled or relieved. It's part of the experience of having a baby to the medieval physicians, and indeed, very few people have a physician. You have midwives who would probably be very skilled uh, in folklore terms, but of course that some of them don't know anything about, they know nothing about hygiene, and they know nothing about, uh, in a sense, any how to deal with any of the problem births. Um, Margaret Beaufort has a birth which is so bad for her as such a very young girl that she is rendered infertile and she can never have another child. One of the interesting things about Margaret Beaufort is that although she is an heiress to the House of Lancaster and she's the daughter of a Beaufort, so she's in a sense socially a very, very important person. In fact, she is used absolutely as a pawn. She is married very, very young. She's bedded very, very young. And uh, she's sent off to live with her husband. It's, she is of no importance to anybody personally. She is of importance only as a member of this great house. Margaret's son Henry himself, to his, to, to his dying day, always acknowledged his loyalty and his gratitude to his mother, both for the terrible childbirth he had, which I'm sure she described to him <laughs> with as much guilt-inducing uh, description as possible, but also because he really did know that while he was an exile in Brittany with very, very little chance of coming back to England, she never stopped campaigning for him. First of all, she negotiated with the House of York, the ruling House of York, for his safe return with their consent. And then after that, when she saw there was an opportunity for him, she mounted one conspiracy after another to get him back to England. There's no doubt in my mind, for example, that her third marriage, in which uh, she and her husband agreed that they would not have intercourse, it was a white marriage in that sense, uh, was entirely for the benefit of her son, Henry Tudor. She chose to marry Thomas Lord Stanley, who had an enormous following and who was very, very um, powerful in the House of York, but was also notorious for his readiness to change sides. And I think she married him thinking he would either get her son back into the reigning House of York, or that if she was very lucky, uh, he would turn against the House of York and put his men in the field for Henry Tudor. Margaret Beaufort has to find a way to legitimate the claim that her son Henry Tudor's making on the English crown. Partly they do this by uh, destroying the reputation of Richard III, blackening his name, and that goes on really right until now. But also they do it by, in a sense, closing the divide of the cousins of the Cousins' War. They bring the two houses together, so the Princess Elizabeth of York marries Henry Tudor, his, who is of Lancaster, and their child is, they call him, Arthur, the Rose of England, because he's the Tudor Rose who is both red and white. And that, for her, is the absolute coup, that not only does she bring her son back to England, but with him and with this marriage, she can bring peace. I, there's no doubt in my mind that she didn't like her daughter-in-law very much because uh, Elizabeth was of the enemy house and Elizabeth was very loyal and had been very attached to Richard III and of course her father was Edward IV but Margaret Beaufort was a masterly politician and I'm sure she just assumed that this was a price she would have to pay to get the daughter-in-law that she needed for her son's throne to be secure. <laughs>